there are particles passing through your head at the rate of about five a second that come from outer space ultimately, and we haven't got the faintest clue what actually produces them. My name is Paula Chadwick, I'm a professor of astrophysics here at Durham, and I run the Gamma Ray Astronomy Group. I got interested in astronomy a long time ago. I was six when they landed on the moon, and I think that's what probably did it. I worked my way through school, I did a degree at London in astronomy, and then I got interested in the really explosive stuff. Um, anything high energy I thought was utterly fascinating. Um, and so when I came here, I did a doctorate in things that explode. Um, and after that, I kind of stayed. And uh, now I had the team that I joined as a, as a sprog a long time ago. What I'm interested in are things like supernova explosions. So these are um, stars come towards the end of their life and they explode. I'm interested in black holes, which produce jets at extreme speed, jets of material shooting out into outer space. I'm interested in all that kind of thing. Without realizing it, you're used to something called the electromagnetic spectrum. You're used to light, which we see all the time. You're used to radio waves, which you know, give you radio programs, obviously. Microwaves heat up your dinner. You're also used to x-rays, which you probably will have if you go to hospital. All these things have different energy. So radio waves are really low energy. Light waves are kind of somewhere in the middle. X-rays are quite high energy. Gamma rays are the most energetic. Gamma rays are the most energetic things that are created by astronomical objects, uh, or indeed anything for that matter. We're really interested in where and why these objects produce what they do. The cosmic rays themselves, turns out, actually do have a use. Um, because you can use them to find holes in structures. Holes in, in pyramids has been done, for example, or even holes in railway tunnels. It's uh, another use of them. When a gamma ray comes into the atmosphere, it produces a cascade of particles, a whole pile of stuff um, as it whaps into the stuff in the top of the atmosphere. Some of that stuff is going faster than the speed of light in air. That's not faster than the speed of light in a vacuum, which as far as we know is impossible. But once you go faster than the speed of light in air, you produce the light speed equivalent of a sonic boom. It's a brief flash of blue light. It's called Cherenkov radiation. It's about one ten thousandth of the total starlight. It lasts a few billionths of a second, and I spend my life trying to detect the stuff. So we build big telescopes. The biggest ones that we're currently trying to build are 24 meters in diameter. So we've got a lot of mirrors. We collect the light. We then point that light towards a really high-speed detector that's capable of reacting in a matter of a billionth of a second or so, and then we record that information, work out where it's come from, and that tells us where the gamma rays come from. If you had a gamma ray burst that was close enough, it would be seriously bad news. However, it doesn't look like there's any object anywhere near us that's ever likely to produce a gamma ray burst, so you're all right. One of the big questions for us is the origin of dark matter. We'd like to know what the vast bulk of the universe is made of, and we're not quite sure. And one of the ways in which you might be able to detect dark matter is when it hits itself, if you like, you will get gamma rays emitted, and we're kind of hunting for some of that. The characteristics that you need for this job are always asking why, always asking is the answer I've just got sensible, because it's really easy to come up with an answer that actually makes no sense at all if you think about it for five minutes. And also actually an ability to communicate because you can be the best scientist in the entire world, but if you're just basically sitting under a bucket for your entire life, then nobody's gonna know it. 